All right guys, MTech Guy here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the E53 X5. Now then, I've been having a bit of trouble with my left rear door there. Can't get into it from the outside. So today, we're going to look at the required repair, go through the relevant steps, and get it sorted. So as you can see, it won't open from the outside. Now, it's not so much the handle that's causing the issue, it's the mechanism that sits with inside the door there. So that's what we're going to look at changing out today. So I've owned this vehicle for about three years now, and when I first got the car, had the same issue on the right rear door, so I got that mechanism changed out, and then now a few years later, having the same issue with this left rear door. Now this is a super, super common issue with these vehicles. Doesn't matter if you've got the pre-facelift or the later models, as long as it's the E53 X5 chassis, all the door handles are the same. Now if you haven't experienced this issue during your ownership, it'll be pretty certain it'll crop up at some point. Now, let's go and take a look at what parts required. All right, so this is what the part looks like that we're gonna be replacing today. Now this is all you need to complete the job, but just bear in mind when you do order the part, these are specific to each door. So just make sure you get the correct one for the correct door that you're having trouble with. Right, now because this job's gonna involve removing the airbag unit from the door itself to gain access to that handle mechanism, the first thing we need to do before anything else is disconnect the battery which lives under the spare tire in the boot here so to start off we'll remove the spare wheel right now we've got the spare wheel out of the way you can see that we've got this thing here so the battery is pretty much buried on these cars now this has got the rear air suspension and the air compressor lives under here so we need to get this up and out of the way to gain access to the battery and the way i normally do this is you've got this frame here this v-shaped frame there's two 13 mil nuts there and then one there and one there. So we're gonna remove them and then we're just gonna leave this up and gain access to the battery. lift this frame up you can see we've got access to the battery so we need to disconnect the negative lead there and then we'll just make sure this is tucked out the way so it can't come into contact with that terminal while we're busy working on the airbag Nice and out the way there. Right, so once you've got the battery disconnected, the other thing you want to consider before you shut your boot lid is that you don't want it to engage here at the clasp. So what I normally do is just put a rag here to stop that engaging, and then that means that you'll be able to get it open because of course the switch works off a solenoid. So of course we can't open the door from the outside, so we're gonna have to gain access from the inside here. So the next job to allow us access to the handle mechanism inside the door there, we need to remove the door panel. So that's achieved by removing four screws. So there'll be one hidden behind the airbag plug there. There'll be a couple behind this trim here. And then we've got one just hiding above the pocket there. So we'll take a look at that now. So first up, using a plastic pry tool, we're gonna pop the wee cap here and we're gonna remove this wooden trim slowly, starting at this end and then just tease it back. Okay, so now we've got the trim pieces removed. We've got access to our four bolts, one there, one there, one hiding in there, and then of course, the one down here. Now they're all T20s, so we'll remove them four screws now. Okay, so now we've got the four screws removed, we're ready to remove the door card itself. Now to do that, we need to pry it away from the door. So this is held on by lots and lots of plastic 
clips around the perimeter across the bottom and the sides and then along the top it's sort of pressed on with these metal clips so we'll go around the bottom first use a plastic pry tool just to pull that away from the door itself and then we'll come to the top just get our hands behind it and then just pull it straight out and then you need to lift it up and over the wee lock pin here and just keep in mind once you have released the door card itself before you pull it right away from the car just be aware that there will be a few electrical connectors around the back there for the lights and bits and pieces the door handle and whatnot so we're going to disconnect them before we pull it right away from the car Okay, so here's the door card removed from the car and we're looking at the reverse of it now. Now I'll just show you where the electrical connectors are that you need to disconnect before you pull it away from the car. It's just a bit easier to show you now rather than try and film it while I'm busy pulling it away from the car. So there's one up here, there's one in the speaker there too. Third one's down here and then the fourth one is down here. Now with them electrical connectors, I find that it's a little bit easier to remove them with some needle nose pliers because they do get a bit sticky over the years and then as well as the electrical connectors there's the cable for your inner door handle there and that literally just pulls up like a lever and then slides out we'll just take a look at the other end of that now so here's the other end of that cable so it literally just pulls up like that and then straight out all right so now we're ready to remove the airbag so to start off with we'll remove the electrical connector here now there's just a top flat piece there that pulls out and then we'll just pull it straight off and then we've got three bolts to remove they take a 10 mil socket and then we'll just remove that from the car and place it somewhere gently out the way All right, so now we've got the airbag out of the way. The next job is to remove the vapor barrier. So we just want to pull it away from the door enough just to pull the corner back there to gain access to the door handle mechanism there. So we'll start off by just slipping a utility knife through here. There's like a bitumen type seal here. It is soft, but you just want to be careful that you don't tear the vapor barrier. You can see where someone's been in here before and done just that. But yeah, just try not to tear it or damage it in any way because it can let the weather in. Okay, so now we've got that pulled back. You can see the handle lives just up inside there. So the next step is to remove the door handle itself. So we'll start off by removing this segment here. And to achieve that, we've got to pull this plastic plug on the end of the door here. And then there's just a five mil Allen bolt. So we need to slide a Allen key through there at an angle. And we've got the Allen bolt that lives in here on an angle. It takes a four mil Allen key. And then just be careful you don't lose the bolt down inside the door while you retrieve it. So now that we've got the Allen bolt removed, we can now pry this piece off with our plastic trim tool.
Okay, so next up we're ready to remove the handle itself. Now what I've done here is just pushed it out with the screwdriver and just sort of jammed it in there through the opening there just to hold it out. I'm going to remove this nut which is an 8mm and then we're going to slide the handle down, just rotate it and then remove it from the car. Now you don't need to take the nut right off, just back it up enough so you can rotate the handle down. So now we're ready to pivot it down. So when you do this, just make sure that this is pushed out with the screwdriver and just watch that you don't scratch your paint as you come down with it. There we go. Okay, so next up, to allow us to remove the mechanism from the door itself, it's attached with a Phillips head screw behind this gasket here and then it's just hooked in at this end so we need to remove the screw push it back and then slide it out that way and then remove it from the car so we'll start off by removing this gasket okay so before we remove this screw we need to jump inside the door and remove the handle cable from the mechanism so as you can see on the new one we've got here it'll be held in by a retainer there so you need to pop that piece out and also there's a ball socket here on the end of the cable so that needs popping off also not sure if you can make it out inside the door there but we'll have a go it's the ball socket it's the plastic retainer there we go so you can see that that's free now number two phillips So you don't need to remove the screw right out, just enough to be able to slide the mechanism forward. What I've found is, before we try and attempt to remove the handle mechanism itself, this lock pin here, at the end of it, we just want to pry the end of it off. It's just another little plastic ball socket. You just use a pry tool like that, and then we'll take that out just to give us a bit more room. There we go. And then we'll come back round the inside, and it's just a case of fishing the old unit out. We're just ready to shuffle this out. Here's the old one. So if we take a look at the old mechanism here, you can see where it's broken here, it's sheared off. And of course the new one, it's all nicely held together there, nice and solid. So we'll put this back in the car now. Okay, so here's the new unit. We're gonna hold it up this way, and then we're gonna feed it through the door, slide it in like that, and then up and round. And then this front section here, just going to fit in the groove around the other side, just here. There we go, it takes a bit of shuffling, but you get there in the end. Mechanism located here correctly, and we've got our Phillips head screw repositioned there now tightened up so now, now that's all secured i've also been in round the back and just connected that cable again just as it was uh, the way it came out just see we're all reconnected there again okay so now we've got the mechanism secured with our phillips head screw there so next up we're ready to reinstall the gasket there and then we'll put the handle on next All right, so now we're ready to reinstall the handle. Now, as you can see, I've got this clasp pushed out again with the screwdriver just to help us along there. Now there's a notch on the end of here and that locates in the front section there. So we're gonna put it on this sort of angle, push the front end in and then slowly rotate this up without scratching the door. And then we're just gonna locate that stud through the clasp there and then tighten up our 10 mil nut. Okay, so there's the handle back in position. Now, before we go any further, we'll just put our lock pin back in around the side here. So we'll just hook that through and down and then reattach it on the inside there. Now, I just want to stress that you really have to remove this to try and get the door handle out, the inner door handle. 
you won't be able to do it with this in position so you must take this out of the way before you try and get the old one out okay so now we're ready to offer up this piece here and then once that's in position we can go around to the end of the door and tighten up that allen bolt with our four mil allen key and also reinstall our plastic trim piece here here we go right then that feels better okay so now we can put the airbag back in place and then the door card back on Okay, so now we're ready to reinstall our four screws to hold the door panel back on. Okay, so now we're ready to refit the trim pieces. So we'll just slot the front end in there, clipper in place, and do it with one hand. And the wear bag logo there. And there we have it, that's that done. Now we just need to reconnect the battery, put the spare wheel back, and we're all done. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the negative cable refitted to the battery there, tightened up. So now we're ready to bolt down our air compressor again, and then put the spare wheel back on. All right guys, well here we have it, that's that job sorted. So I can now get in and out my car without too much trouble. Hope this video helped you guys out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Guy. thanks a lot for watching.